Dear friends, welcome to STEM Scholar. Two things are infinite. One is human st stupidity and universe. A world renowned scientist has said this. Do you know who is it? It's none other than the versatile Albert Einstein. Do you know? For what discovery he has got Nobel Prize? It is not for the special theory of relativity. It is not for some other discovery. It is for the successful explanation of photoelectric effect. So today we discuss about photoelectric effect and important phenomena of light. Let's discuss about photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect. See, before entering to photoelectric effect, see, we discuss something about light. We know that light is having dual nature. It has got two natures. What are the two natures of light? We know that one is particle nature, definitely particle nature. And what is the other nature? It is wave nature. So light has dual nature. One is particle nature and other one is wave nature. The interference, polarization, diffraction, etc. These phenomena are successfully governed by the wave nature. And some other phenomena like Reflection and refraction are mainly governed by particle nature. So, let us discuss something regarding the dual nature of light. What is the dual nature of light? See, in 1887, a world famous scientist of that time, Heinrich Hertz, discovered photoelectric effect. So, he was dealing with the resonated subcubes while dealing with resonated subcubes he discovered photoelectric effect so what is photoelectric effect when light is when light is, is falling on certain metals electrons are emitted light is when light is incident on certain metals suppose light is incident on, on a particular metal electrons are emitted so this particular phenomenon is known, phenomenon is known as photoelectric effect. And during this process, electrons are emitted, of course, and these electrons are known as photoelectrons. And due to the emission of electrons, there is the generation of electricity, there is the generation of current. This current is known as photoelectric current. So this is photoelectric effect by Heinrich Hertz. When light is falling on certain metals, electrons are emitted. Okay, so in, usual, in some circumstances, it may be visible light. In some other circumstances, it may be ultraviolet light. So when ultraviolet light is falling on certain metals, electrons are emitted. In some other cases, it may be alkali metals like sodium, potassium, etc. In these metals also, when light is falling, electrons are emitted. Or in other way, photoelectrons are emitted. Now let us discuss a, an experimental setup regarding photoelectric effect. What is, an, what is that experimental setup? We are taking an evacuated quartz, quartz su system, quartz crystal, quartz evacuated tube, quartz tube. This is evacuated. It is made of quartz. And one side we are taking cathode, other side we are taking anode. These are made of zinc. So two zinc plates made of cathode and anode are here and they are connected with a batch cell and in one place a galvanometer is placed. We know that galvanometer is used to detect the presence of current. So what is happening when here we have cathode, here we have anode. Cathode is connected to negative, anode is connected to positive terminal. See, if light is falling on, 
cathode. You seen that when light is falling on cathode, there is generation of electricity, there is generation of current, galvanometer got deflection. Okay, so light is falling, light is falling on cathode and light and galvanometer got deflected. That means certain photoelectrons are created here. And these photoelectrons are moving towards anode. And if the situation is different, suppose the situation is different, reversed. That is, electrons are falling on, light is falling on anode. If light is made to fall on anode, what will be the result? What is happening? It is seen that no generation of current. Current is not at all generated. So it is clear that if light is falling on cathode and there is generation of current, it means that the generated particles are electrons. So it is clear that the generated particles are electrons. And the photoelectric current is mainly depending on intensity of incident radiation. If intensity of incident radiation is increased, photoelectric current also gets increased. Now let's discuss something regarding loss. Loss of photoelectric emission. What are the loss of photoelectric emission? See, the first law is this one. There is a particular frequency. That frequency is known as threshold frequency. Threshold frequency. beyond which only the photoelectric emission is occurring. So there is a frequency known as threshold frequency. Below that frequency for, of incident radiation, there is no photoelectric emission. So the minimum frequency of light needed to, needed to fall on metals is threshold frequency. Beyond only that, the photoelectric emission occurs. Below the photo threshold frequency, there is no emission of photoelectric current. That is the first law occurring. Second law, the intensity of incident radiation is giving the photoelectric current. So, if more photoelectric current is, if more intense more intensity is intense rays are falling on the metal, the photoelectric current is increased, provided that the intensity radiation is having threshold wavelength, threshold frequency. That is the second principle. Then the third one is this one. There is no time lag between the incident radiation and the ejection of electrons. These are the laws of photoelectric effect. So also, if there is a particular frequency and due to that frequency, the electrons are emitted and for that particular frequency is used in two, two ways. First, it is used to just eject the electron and the rest of the frequency, rest of the energy is used to give kinetic energy to the electrons, ejected electrons. These are the laws of photoelectric emission. First, there is a threshold frequency. Below that frequency, there is no emission taking place. The photoelectric current is mainly depending on the intensity of, intensity of the incident light. The third one, there is no time lag between the incident ray and the ejected electrons. So in 1905, Einstein worked on photoelectric effect. Nobody could successfully explain the photoelectric effect. So Einstein worked on photoelectric effect and he successfully gave some equations. Using that equations, we can easily calculate, we can easily explain the photoelectric effect. See, we so we know that there is a particular frequency. Like he, he made the explanation based on 
Max Planck's theory. Max Planck's. He used Max Planck's theory to explain the photoelectric effect. See, when light is emitted, it is in the form of quanta. It is in the form of quanta or packets of energy. Each packet is known as photon. So, light is emitted in the form of quanta or photon or energy packets. Each energy packet is having the energy H nu, where nu is the frequency of the light. See, now how Einstein is used to explain quantum theory in photoelectric effect. So let us think. Suppose light is incident on a metal. Okay, it is used in two ways. That energy, that incident light, it is in the form of quanta or photons or energy packets. That is used in two ways. It, it is interacting with the metal. It is interacting with the metal electrons. The incident photon is interacting with the incident photons. Incident, incident photon is interacting with the electrons. So it is used in two ways. One is, it is used to just pluck the electron from the metal. It is used to just liberate the electron from the metal. Now, second thing is, remaining part of the energy, other than just to liberate the electron, is used to give kinetic energy to the electron. So, the intensity, the energy of the light, instant on a metal is used for two purposes one is to just liberate the electron from the metal and the second thing is remaining part of the energy is used to impart kinetic energy to the to the electron so the given energy is h nu the falling energy the instant energy of the photons is h nu this h nu is used for Two, pro two purposes. What are the purposes? One is, it is used to just liberate the electron. Just to liberate the electron. That is, for, that is H nu zero. Where nu zero is the frequency. To just liberate. That frequency is known as threshold frequency. So H nu equal to H nu zero plus the remaining part of the energy is used to impart kinetic energy. The maximum kinetic energy. That is half mv max square. So this is the equation. So we have, here we have the incident energy is h nu. The coming energy is h nu. That energy is used for two purposes. One is to just celebrate the electron. That is h nu zero. Plus the remaining part is used to increase the kinetic energy. To give the kinetic energy. This is the equation. This h nu zero is known as Warko function. Warko function. So this is this equation. This is our equation. This is our Einstein's equation. This is Einstein's equation for photoelectric effect. Now, see, we know that this equation can be changed in some other way. That is, half mv max square. The kinetic energy. What is the amount of kinetic energy? This kinetic energy equal to h nu minus h nu zero. This first equation and this is second equation. So the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy is equal to h nu, work from h nu, the first energy minus the original energy minus the energy to liberate the electron. That is h nu minus h nu zero or h into nu minus nu zero. See, in some other way, we can write in terms of wavelength. We know that V minimum, V minimum, that is frequency minimum, is equal to frequency can be written in terms of C by lambda. Where C is the velocity of light, lambda is the wavelength. When frequency is minimum, wavelength becomes maximum. So, V minimum can be expressed as c by lambda max so here it can be 
here it can be used here it can be written half mv max square equal to this equation h into in the place of new we are writing c by lambda minus h into new zero can be written as c by new this is this is actually this new zero equal to new minimum it can be said as new minimum it is new zero is new minimum it is a minimum minimum frequency that is h c by lambda minus minus h c by lambda max that is h c comma equal into 1 by lambda minus 1 by lambda max that is half mv square max this is another equation for photoelectric effect another equation or another form of einstein's equation for photoelectric effect so we have discussed one equation like this it's new for it's new it can be used for two parts another in terms of in, in, in the form of kinetic energy a new form in the form of wavelength these are the equations for photoelectric effect by einstein see this is kinetic energy kinetic energy is linearly depending on wave, li, linearly depending on frequency kinetic energy is not at all depending on the intensity of instant radiation but it is depending on frequency of the radiation it is linearly depending on the fre frequency now how einstein is explained einstein's explanation for that we can use this equation half mv square max equal to s nu minus s nu zero or it can under way h into nu minus nu zero first thing if nu is less than nu zero what will be the situation nu is this nu nu is less than nu zero so it is seen that kinetic energy k will be negative so if k is negative kinetic energy is negative that means there is no ejection is taking place there is no ejection in the case of photoelectric effect so this is the first explanation for photoelectric effect now the second is what is the second explanation if nu zero is greater than if nu is greater than nu zero what is the situation nu is greater than nu zero that is kinetic energy will be positive and there will be emission there will be emission of electrons that is the second explanation and third one is see each photon emits an electron suppose light is falling on the metal each photon can emit each electron so intensity if more intense if intensity of light is more means more photons are coming that means each photon is emitting an electron so if more intensity means more electrons are emitting, are produced that means photoelectric current will be more and there is no time lag the, the process is instantaneous as soon as the photon hits the electron the metal it emits it ejects an electron so there is no time lag these are the explanation for the photoelectric effect by einstein so this could successfully explain photoelectric effect so he got nobel prize he got nobel prize not for special theory of relativity the famous special theory of relativity but for photoelectric effect it's successful explanation
Actually, 48th degree theorem was invented by Heinrich Hertz, but he could not explain it. He could not go further into it. So Einstein moved further and explained photoelectric effect by using Max Planck's theory of radiation. So he got it. He got Nobel Prize in 1921 and he received Nobel Prize in 1922. So he successfully explained the photoelectric effect. The first explanation was there is a particular frequency needed for the emission of photoelectric current, photoelectric photoelectrons that minimum frequency is known as threshold frequency that frequency so for that frequency to occur nu must be greater than nu must be greater than nu zero if nu is less than nu zero kinetic energy will be negative there won't be emission second was photoelectric current is mainly depending on intensity of instant light more intense, more photoelectrons. Each photon ejects an electron. So it is mainly depending on photo intensity of intensity of photo light. Third one, the kinetic energy. See, the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is mainly depending on frequency. Frequency of the radi instant radiation. Third one, the emission. The emission of electrons, the emission of photoelectrons, is, or another way, the photoelectric effect is an instantaneous process. As soon as the photon hits the metal, hits the electron, it emits, it ejects an electron. It's an instantaneous process. These are the explanations for the photoelectric effect. Hope you understood it. And our versatile scientists explained it in a nice manner do write your comments hope you understood it do write your comments in our comment box in the next class we'll come with a new topic thank you